bank reconciliation statement. In this learning unit, the objectives are to explain the purpose of the bank reconciliation and also to be able to prepare a bank reconciliation statement. The whole purpose of a bank recon starts from st the fact that we want to be able to compare our records to the records of the bank. In this case, it's our bank control account in the general ledger versus our bank statement. The major difference between how the bank views our money and how we view our money is money that in the bank, all our receipts which appear on the debit side would appear as credits on their side because to the bank, they think they owe us that money, but to us, it's an asset. And all our payments which appear uh, on the credit side on our bank control would appear as debits on the bank statement. So if we think then about the bank reconciliation, the, its purpose would then be to show the timing and adjusting differences between the bank statement and our records. Simple things like bank charges, which we'll only find out about once the bank is actually charged at the end of the month. And then to also reconcile the balance of the bank statement with our adjusted balance in the bank account in the general ledger. Some items we find in our records, but we may not be able to find them on the bank statement. In general, we have only two types of those items. The first ones being outstanding deposits. Outstanding deposits, it's money that we have received in the business. We've been able to capture it onto our bank control account via our cash receipts, but we have not been able to go to the bank and deposit these amounts. Therefore, they would not appear on the bank statement. Secondly, we then have unpresented or outstanding checks. These are checks that we have written out to other people. These could be uh, suppliers, uh, employees, could be anyone in essence. However, those people have not taken the checks to the bank to be cashed. So on our side, we have put them in our cash payments channel, channel therefore adjusted our bank control account on the credit side, but they don't appear in the bank statement because the people have not taken them to the bank. We also then have a list of items which may appear on the bank statement, but not on our records. The first one, bank charges. We only find out about this once the bank has charged us. Then we have stop orders. A stop order is an instruction to the bank to pay a specified amount to a specified person on a specified date. So an example of that would be insurance. We know who we need to pay the insurance to, we know on which date, and we know the amount. Unfortunately, we only see that transaction through the bank statement once it has actually occurred. Debit order on the other side is when we as a business give another business permission to withdraw money from our account. The permission is not given for a specified amount. For example, if we need to pay for our telephone account to Telcom, we don't know how much we owe them until the month is actually up. So it's better to just give them permission to withdraw that money from our account. Then we have dishonored checks. Dishonored checks is if people have paid us, therefore we thought we had the money, but later on it turns out that they don't have money in their account. Therefore the check is dishonored or it's also referred to as a referred to drawer check or an RD check. Interest expense is when we are on overdraft and we need to pay the bank the interest. And the opposite of that is then interest income. If we do have money in our account and the bank has given us interest income. And the last ones are then direct deposits. Customers or other people who are paying us money go straight to our bank and deposit that money. Or these days we find lots of EFTs via internet banking. Therefore, we don't know about that money until it has actually appeared on the bank statement. The procedure we would follow to actually prepare a bank reconciliation would be first of all, to get the balances at month end on the bank statement and our bank account in the general ledger. Compare the two balances and identify the differences between them. 
Then we identify any adjustment entries and items to update the general ledger. So it's those items that appear on the bank statement that we don't find in our records and also those items that appear on our records that we don't find in the bank statement. Then we update our general ledger bank account with all the items that we find on the bank statement which are not on our records. For the rest of the items, we then prepare the bank reconciliation statement. Therefore, the bank reconciliation statement will only have outstanding deposits and unpresented checks. How do we then adjust our bank account? For bank charges, you would debit bank charges, the expense account, and you would credit the bank account. In the folio, we always write BS, which stands then for bank statement. For stop orders, we would debit whichever expense it relates to and we would credit our bank account. So if this was for insurance, you would debit insurance and you would credit bank. Debit orders, you would debit the expense and credit bank account. So if the expense was for telephone, you would debit telephone and you would credit bank account. For dishonored checks, it's money that was received from our debtors so now we need to increase our debtors yet again so we would debit debtors control and we would credit the bank account our interest expense we would debit our interest expense and we would credit our bank our interest income we would debit our bank account and we would credit our interest income for direct deposits, we would debit our bank account and we would credit whatever account it relates to. So for example, if it was money from a debtor, we would credit debtor's control. If it was money for sales, we would credit sales, but the debit would always sit on the bank account. So let's look at quickly look at the format of the bank reconciliation statement. The bank reconciliation statement is always shown as at a specific date. We always start off with the final balance on our bank statement. Then you take away all the outstanding checks or unpresented checks. You must show the details of the checks, so check number one and so on. And we then add on all our outstanding deposits. Our outstanding deposits is money that we have received. We know we've received it. However, it has not gone through the bank account. The balance of those items must equal to the balance per our bank account in the general ledger.